Hello everyone, today, I would like to introduce you my new vintage fashion printable design collection, comprising three distinct kits. 1. Vintage Fashion Journal Kit. This kit includes 30 files encompassing front and back covers, journal pages, vintage fashion images, background papers, and even spine templates. It's your shortcut to creating a stunning vintage fashion journal without the time-consuming task of collage making. 2. Add-on Kit. In this kit, you'll find 15 files featuring elegant Rococo-style pockets, envelopes, fuzzy cuts, cards, wax seal images, bookmarks, and tags. These additional elements are perfect for enhancing the visual appeal of your vintage fashion journal. 3. Vintage Fashion Folio Kit. With 11 files and 33 images, this kit empowers you to craft a double flap folio brimming with pockets, coordinating tags, labels, envelopes, and cards all in the vintage fashion theme. Our talented artist Walter will show you step-by-step step how to create a beautiful moody fold folio with this collection. Become an artisan with Walter's step-by-step -step guide. Join us and create your own masterpiece today. Don't miss this journey into the world of vintage elegance. Immerse yourself in the timeless allure of vintage fashion. Are you ready? Now, let's watch Walter's tutorial. Hi. This is Walter from Zimstones by Walter, and I'm coming to you today on behalf of the design team for the Gingerbread Prints. And today I'm going to be walking you through how I have made a, um, a folio with the um, vintage fashion kits um, from the Gingerbread Prints. There's three kits in total. One is the fashion journal kit, one is the fashion folio kit, and one is the, uh, the vintage fashion add-on kit. Um, I'm going to be using elements from each of the three kits. You can um, find these kits um, on the Kofi page um, and be able to to buy them. Um, and this is a this is a really fun project. And the good thing is there's no binding involved since it's a folio. It's all folding and gluing together. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through how I went ahead and created it. So the first thing you'll want to do is, um, after downloading your kits and deciding on which images you want to use, is to print those pages out. I printed them out um, using 65-pound white cardstock. I like to use the 65-pound white cardstock because it's a little sturdy. And if you're using um, a, like a black or a darker cardstock, you don't see it through. Um, you, whereas I do have some pages here that were printed out um, on regular copy paper or printer paper. And you do run the risk of being able to see that darker color through it. So I just like the thicker cardstock for that. So I have my pages printed out. I'm going to um, decide which images I want to use and I'll cut them down to the sizes I need. Um, for this particular folio, um, you are going to need one eight and a half by 11 um, piece of black cardstock. I'm using, this is going to serve as the, the base cover. So I'm using 110 pound cardstock and I have it scored from each um, side at two and a half inches and then again at three. Then I flipped it over, did it again at two and a half and at three. Um, and we'll burnish those edges when we, when we need to. You're then going to cut out two pieces of black cardstock and this is 65 pounds, so it's lighter. And this is gonna be on the inside of the journal, or uh, the folio. And the size for these is eight and a, uh, eight and a quarter, 8.25 inches by 10.25 inches. And then each of them, um, both pay, uh, pieces, are scored at two and a half inches, two and three quarter inches, and seven and three quarter inches. Um, don't worry about the dimensions and writing them down. I will um, include them in the uh, description of the folio so that you can uh, get them from there. And then the last piece that you're going to need is um, a piece of black 65 pound uh, cardstock that is cut to eight and a quarter by 10 inches. And it's scored at two and a half inches and again at seven and a half inches. Okay, so what I'm doing is going through each of these pieces of the base folio, and I am scoring, um, I've already scored them, so I am taking my bone folder and burnishing them 
along the edges to get those folds in there. You want to make sure it's a nice crisp folds. And then for one like this where you have a um, the lines um, so close to each other, you want to be careful. Um, and so I'll fold down on the furthest one and go ahead and burnish that. Then I will carefully bring that other piece up and fold it. Let's see if I can show you this. Fold it along that other line, just like that. And we'll get the bone folder to press that down. So you get a nice crisp line and fold on that. And you'll see why there's that, um, that really close, uh, th those close lines in, in just a minute. And now we'll do the same for this, which is going to be the, um, the main piece of the folio, the cover. And for this, since it's a thicker cardstock, 110 pound, you'll definitely want to go over it a few times just to make sure that you get a nice, nice fold there. Then we'll do the same with this next one. Start to fold it, get it along there, and then fold it down and go over that a couple of times. And I will repeat that on the other side. And since this is a thicker cardstock, it is a little bit harder to fold. Um, you know, it is heavier, but not impossible by any means. And you just need to go a little bit more slowly with it to make sure you don't crease it somewhere where you don't want it creased. There we go. So now all of these pieces um, have been scored and folded, and we're going to get ready to start assembling the folio. And it's going to be pretty simple. Um, what we're going to do is start with the kind of the flat piece, which folds flat, no, no extra scores in it. And we're going to take one of the two pieces that have been scored and folded at the other sides. And we're simply going to connect that with um, double-sided tape um, and craft glue. Um, you can use both, you can do either or, but just to give you a sense, it's going to go like that on one side, and then we'll do it the same way on that other side. So that is how we will get started. And take my tape runner, and you could, if you wanted to make a pocket out of this particular you could make that into a pocket. I'm, I'm not going to, but that's something you could do. And if you were going to make it a pocket, you would just want to make sure that you're putting just adhesive along this bottom side and each side and not across the top. Um, but since I don't care about that, I'm going to go ahead and just put it all the way across. So, and I am going to use both... Um, the double-sided tape and some glue. I like to do that just to make sure that it's sturdy and to make sure it's gonna stick. And just as an extra insurance policy to, to know that that is definitely stuck. You also just wanna be sure and, and uh, be careful that you're gonna connect it to the right side. You don't want it on the side that has that quarter inch fold there. You wanna do it on the full side. And in order to connect these up, I just line them up. And the other thing is what's nice about the glue is it gives you just a little bit of maneuvering um, because it doesn't set as quickly as the double-sided tape does. But once that is lined up, just like so, go ahead and get that one pressed down. And now we'll do the other side. Again, making sure that you're not grabbing that side with the quarter inch. 
to connect it. We'll take our double-sided tape. That one just ran out. Grab another one. I keep them handy. I keep multiples of these double-sided tape rollers on hand. Um, it's actually kind of funny. My uh, One of my sisters and my niece go around to the... This is a particular one is from the dollar store. Um, they're cheap but they work really well. And so they go around and, and collect those for me. Um, and when they come to visit, they'll bring them down. So it's, I'm always getting little crafting gifts from each of them. And I appreciate that. And I know they appreciate the, the crafts that I make for them. So it works out for, for all of us. So now that you have that, we'll go ahead and line that up like we did on the other side. And when you're happy, you can bring that up and just press those together. So this is what forms the inside part of the folio. And that is going to go inside of this other heavier, heavier piece. And where, how that's gonna work is you're going to have that folded. And this middle piece is going to line up right onto that middle piece. So what you'll do is, um, since we're not going to put any, obviously we won't be putting any of the designs on the back of it, we can just go ahead and run our, run our, um, our tape and our glue. And then when you go to put it down, you're just going to fit it right into that center piece, which that does line up exactly. And then we'll press it down. So for this, we'll run several pieces of the double-sided tape going down. And if you're using just glue, you can put the glue wherever you want. Um, if you're using something like glue dots, you know, use whatever adhesive you like the most. Um, I happen to really like this, these double-sided tape rollers. They work really well for me. And sometimes, like what I just did, you might get it a little too far over where you don't want it. And if that's the case, just take your finger and you can kind of just rub down on that and it picks it right up and off. So no big deal there. I am also going to run, as I said, just a little bit of glue. Maybe we'll go on the in-between parts where there isn't tape and have that adhere there. And of course, the good thing about glue is if you get it, you know, you, you get it in a spot where you don't want it, you can just take your finger and wipe it off. So now we know that that's the side that's gonna fit right down in there. What you might wanna do just to make sure that you're getting it line, to help with lining up is just to kind of lift out those sides up a bit. But you can really do this um, by eyeballing it. And probably that's your, your best view is to turn, the, the, um, turn it the long way. Face uh, on, you know, going, going towards you. And that looks good. And over here, and again, you know, if it's not, if, if you happen to press it down and you realize, oh, it's not perfect, it's not where I wanted, and it's too late, you know, don't worry. Um, all that really matters is that it looks good. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I like the way that that is. So now I'm just going to press that down. And so what we're gonna have is the inside with some flaps. You then have these sides with some flaps and you can put those over on top of each other. And then it closes like that. Um, I will end up having a, um, probably something like some lace coming around um, that you can then tie it, tie it closed. 
Um, there are some other things that you can do. For example, if you wanted to have cut a piece that would have um, come off of the top here, and you could have like had a little flap and then had another piece hanging down, you could have certainly, you can certainly do that. Um, really up to you um, and what your preference might be. But I think that looks good. So now we can um, go ahead and start thinking about decorating it. So there are these belly bands that come in the kit. Um, and they are the perfect size to fit these panels in the front. So I'm going to choose two of the images. They're all so beautiful. Um, but there are two that just really speak to me. This one and this one. So I'm going to cut those out and then I'm going to adhere them onto those panels to, um, to make the front cover of our folio. Um, on the inside cover, I may end up using the other two because that they're the perfect size. They'll fit right in there. Um, and that will be the start of our decorating of our, of our folio. So for cutting these out, you could certainly use scissors, um, and fussy cutting is an option. It works, but um, I actually find that my guillotine cutter is a better option for these because it just makes it easier. I know I'm going to get nice, clean, crisp, straight lines that um, my hand is okay, but it's certainly not perfect. Um, and so I just like the cleanliness of, of the guillotine cutter the best. So I'm going to go through and cut each of those to get rid of the white parts and have those be ready to go into the folio. So I got those images into place um, on the front outside and inside flaps, and those look really pretty there. They fit perfectly. Um, I'm really happy with those. So now I'm going to go through the kit, select which images I want to put in and where I want to place them. Um, I'm not going to show you all of those steps because this is a very personal process. You may um, decide to use different images. Um, you may decide to use a different kit or a different product, um, and, and that's totally your call. Um, but I'm going to go through and decide on my images. And for some of these larger ones, I'll use my guillotine cutter to cut that in half. But then for the image, I think what I'll do is I like a, a deckle edge look. I just think it's it's vintage, it's it's fun. And so I'll go ahead and use this die, which is basically like a full page size. Um, and once I have that cut, I'm going to run it through my um, die cutting machine. And that's how I'll get those images ready. Um, I'll be back in a minute with a couple of these. Okay, so I have these two images die cut out. I love the, the look and the, the effect of that deckel die on there. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of white from, the, from that white border that was up at the top. Um, the die would have been too long had I not included part of the border in it. Um, but I'm going to show you, one, you can leave it like that. Two, you could take like a, a tan or a, a very like light cream colored marker and color it. Or three, what I like to do is take some distress ink. In this case, it's the tea dye. The tea dye really gives it that older paper look. And you can just run it and cover up the white with the tea dye. Um, because one, it... Um, it does give it like that vintage look of the paper aging. Um, and two, it covers up that little bit of white um, if, you, if you don't want to see that. I typically always, and, and if you go over like that, that's fine. Because the, these aging stains, these water stains that might happen on something like this, they're, they're, they're not just, you know, all in just one little particular place. They, they happen over the course of years, and um, they appear where they do. So, um, and it, when it dries, it's going to be a little bit less intense anyways. So, I'm just going to go ahead and run this around and cover up that white and get ready to go ahead and decide where in the journal or the, uh, I keep calling it a journal because <laughs> I work on journals. This is a folio, uh, not a journal. Although 
there is an idea I've been toying with as to how to add like a journal aspect to the folio. Um, I'm going to consider to think about it. And uh, if I decide I want to implement it into this project, I will go over it with you in a little bit later in the video. But it's as simple as that. I think it looks great. Um, I'm going to do this other photo and then get them um, into the folio. Okay, so I have um, most of the work done on the folio. As you can see, I've cut out my images. I've put the images in. I've done just some scraps of paper sometimes with a little uh, fussy cut piece. Um, you know, I love these particular images. They're just gorgeous. I mean, they're they're just so vintage and so realistic. Um, beautiful, beautiful pieces of, of artwork here. Um, so I have those incorporated. And I had mentioned to you, oh, maybe there's a journal aspect that I could add. And I think I'm going to do it. And so what I did is I cut out one of the pocket um, pieces. And all you do is you fussy cut it. And then score a line, you know, to separate that piece, score a line to separate that piece. I'm going to put some double-sided foam tape just to, to give it a little bit of space to be able to fit into. And I'm going to put it here. Um, then I have these pages that I printed out. Um, they're basically paper pages, uh, like, you know, for, for part of the journal kit um, that I printed out on just regular copy paper. And I cut them to get the, the whites um, off of the, you know, the surrounding white pieces around the, the borders. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a little journal. And I'm going to take one piece and one piece back to back. Um, use some double-sided tape to tape, the, tape them together. Then once I have all of these done, I'm going to fold them. And I will add a binding to the side. And then this, in and of itself, can either be used as a journal or it could also be used as another piece um, of the folio to decorate. And it should fit right in there. Um, and I think it's going to look really nice and be either a future add-on for an expansion or you could use it for actually writing things down and keeping, keeping notes. Okay, so I have my pocket there. I think it looks great. The next thing is I have those sheets put double-sided back to back to create this little journal. Um, like I said, it can also, it's a part of the folio. It could also be used for taking other images and mounting them on that, for writing notes, for doing a, a lot of different things. So in order to bind this together, it's going to be really simple. I could just use a hole punch and have hole punched and then like use twine or something, but that would have added some bulk that I didn't want to add. So what I did is an inch down, I used one of these um, sharp pointed pokey tools, like I call it, and I just poked a hole right through. I'm then going to, using my grid down here on my craft mat, go up about another inch. Doesn't have to be precise by any means, but about an inch and poke this down through these papers. And this is a technique that I watched Lisa from the Gingerbread Prince, uh, the, the owner of the business, um, do in creating um, a, a binding and I thought it was brilliant and it works really well. Then I'm going to go just about halfway bet uh, between those two points and using the pokey tool, poke through again. And once I have that, I could use lots of different things, um, any kind of string. Um, but what I'm going to use just to make it kind of clear and invisible is I'm going to use this... Um, it's a, a, a polyester, like, you know, wiry type of um, string. Um, it's almost like fishing line, if you will. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to weave it through the holes just to bind these together, tie it on the outside. And with it being clear, you won't see it as much. Um, and I'll show you how it looks when I'm done. Okay, so like I mentioned, the, the nice thing about that, that clear 
um, acrylic string, if you will, or plastic, whatever it is, um, is that you don't really see it that much. And so all I did is I went a couple of times in and throughout the holes. And then on the inside, just went ahead and tied it in a knot and uh, clipped off the ends. And in order to just add a little bit more of a touch to it, I'm just going to take some of that tea stain and go along the spine um, just to help cover up where I poked those holes um, so it will cover, you know, give that a little bit of color. Um, and anywhere you want, you can just run that along. I'd already run it along the pages before I composed this, um, this little um, journal. But you can always add more. And so that's done. And you can go ahead and just slide that into the pocket. And that will press down, no problem. That will close. That will close. Everything will close. Last thing we have to do um, in regards to the, the design of this folio is to do the back. Um, and for the back, I have the idea of like a collage type of look, taking some smaller images from the kit and kind of just making a collage out of the back of it. Um, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that on top of the other half of the paper that I had used on that inside where I made the pocket. I'm going to put that on the, on the outside back, um, then do those collaged images on top of it, and... Uh, I'll show you what the final uh, back cover looks like. Before putting down my back paper, um, I wanted to make sure that I um, have, I want some lace to go around and be able to tie shut at the front of this. So um, I want my paper to go over that so that you just see the lace coming up on the sides and then tying in the front. So I cut a piece from um, some lace I had ordered from Amazon. Just wanted to make sure it was going to fit, and it does. It was long enough. So um, now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive down and put the, um, the lace over it. Then I'll cut my back cover piece of paper and adhere that over. Here's what I ended up doing on the back. I had this piece of copper um, paper from um, that I had saved. It was the inside of a, of a frame that I would used on another project, and I knew I'd want to use it at some point, and I thought it actually would look really nice to put this um, floral image on top of it, kind of center it on the back, and have that be the back cover. So that's what I went with rather than doing a collage type of look, which would have covered up a lot of this beautiful paper. There is one last minute thing I also decided to do. There are these really cool cards that are a part of the kit. And I just didn't have enough space to, to try to incorporate them. So I cut them out and you know, could easily get rid of the white, could easily run some um, ink along the sides can do that if I'd like to. Um, but I used a pocket here and a pocket here that was simply just cut out and then foam tape on the side and on, on each side and on the bottom to create that pocket and put the cards in so that these cards are now a part of the folio as well. The images are, are too nice not to use. Um, and it's just another added interactive element. So with that said, this... Um, this folio is now completed. I don't think there's anything else I'd like to do. Um, I'll be able to tie it closed. We have these front panels back and front. These beautiful, This beautiful image and that beautiful image. I, I just love those pictures. Um, nice, you know, this is vintage fashion. So examples of vintage fashion. Um, the same with this. They're smaller. But I like the use of the smaller um, cutouts against the, the longer paper and just having a little bit of blank space um, that could always go back and use later. Have these two pieces of art with the, the pockets and the, the cards as well. Flower panels on each side there. You have your big pocket. You have your background. And this really cool little journal. Um, that you can use, you know, I could have taken these cards and put them on there. Um, that's an option. Um, but I also like the idea of being able to use that for writing something. So 
this would make a really nice gift for someone. Um, someone who likes the, um, uh, the vintage motif and style. Um, I certainly do. And um, it, it would just be a nice keepsake. So with that said, thanks for crap. I'll tie that later. Thanks for crafting along with me today. I really appreciate it. Please go to the links that I'll have in the description to visit the um, various um, sites for the gingerbread prints. Um, Lisa has some amazing artwork out there, and um, I encourage you to go check it out. Talk to you again soon. Take care.